Hello, geometry students. It's Mrs. Fallon. Um, welcome back. I know we had a little bit of a break here uh, with holiday break. Hope everyone had a great new year. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with lesson 6.3. I'm on page 176 of your student journals. So if you are following along, that's where we're at. All right, we're going to start off with some vocab terms. Um, you're going to need that triangle sheet that I had talked about in the previous videos um, that have like the the perpendicular bisector, angle bisector, median, altitude definitions on there. We're going to add to that today as well. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is the median of a triangle. And so what I need you to understand is that the median of a triangle is a segment from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So let's say I had a triangle, and it doesn't really matter what kind of triangle you have. Um, what we're looking at is if you find, let's say I found the midpoint of, we'll call this segment A to B. And if I found the midpoint of it, I'll call it M. Uh, I'll call this C. Uh, this would be my median. And so what we know in a median, it connects the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So vertex of one triangle, or of one angle of the triangle, to the midpoint of the opposite side. So I'm just going to write connects vertex to midpoint of opposite side. All right, so what you're basically doing here is when you do three medians of a triangle, so imagine that we did this you know, two more times. So let's say I found the median uh, or the midpoint of CB. So we'll just kind of estimate it there. And I drew in my median. So again, we're saying that those two pieces are equal. And then let's say I did the same thing over here for A to C, found the midpoint and then connected it to the opposite side, or the opposite vertex, I should say. All right, where all three of those meet, and obviously I didn't use a straight edge here, but we'll kind of use our imagination. Where all three of those meet is called the centroid. And so what I would like you to write down here where it says centroid, um, you're gonna put where all three medians intersect. All right, an altitude of a triangle is um, kind of a, you know, in the same ballpark as what we're talking about here with the median, but an altitude is a perpendicular segment from a vertex to the opposite side. So again, we're talking about a triangle, so it doesn't really matter what kind of triangle you draw. We're talking about drawing a, so from a vertex, perpendicular straight down. So what you're gonna notice is that, and I tried to draw that so it would be a little bit obvious, that this doesn't have to um, connect to the midpoint. So you notice that this piece and this piece are not equal. So an altitude, kind of like a median, connects a vertex. Um, a median connects a vertex to the midpoint. Um, an altitude connects um, a vertex to basically perpendicular to the opposite side. So we'll say, um, connects a vertex perpendicular to opposite side. And then basically what we're going to hear is an orthocenter is where three altitudes intersect. So if I drew three altitudes now and, um, and I can try and do this. So if I made this like perpendicular and I, again, I'm not sure I'll do this 100% correct, but I'm not actually concerned it here, but so let's say I did that one. And then if I turn this here and did straight perpendicular, it would be like, I think it would be like right here. <laughs> um, and that would be perpendicular. All three points or all three, um, altitudes of a triangle intersect at a point called the orthocenter. All right, so those are kind of our new terms. And so if you would um, grab your sheet, this is the one I was telling you about, and we're going to add to the median and we're gonna kind of finish out this sheet here. So again, a median, if you wanna draw a triangle, it connects a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So that's kind of the drawing you might see. So it connects a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. And like we said, a, a centroid is where, you know, 
three medians intersect. And um, what's special about a median or about, uh, about a centroid in particular, there are some theorems that we're going to talk about. And so I'm going to have us write it down here on this sheet, and then we're going to talk about it um, in a couple examples. So we're going to say the centroid of a triangle is two-thirds the distance from each vertex. Okay. This one's kind of a weird one. So we're going to write it down and I'm going to talk a little bit. Okay. From each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Okay, so what I mean by that is, let's say we have a centroid. So remember we had, um, we could draw three different medians. So if I drew here, let's say that's my midpoint. Let's say this is my midpoint. And let's say this is my midpoint. What we're getting at is, okay, so this point right here is called the centroid. That's what that is. So centroid is right there. Okay, um, what we're learning at, and this, so this is kind of the, the, I guess the important information, is that let's say we take like this segment right here, let's say this is my centroid, we'll call it A to B. Then we know, and uh, let's make this centroid C for centroid, okay? We know that the distance from A to C is two thirds the distance of A to B. Okay, let me say that again. So this distance right here is two-thirds the distance of this whole segment. So from A to C represents two-thirds the distance of the whole um, median. Likewise, C to B is one-third the distance of A to B. So from this little piece right here, C to B, is one-third the distance of the whole thing. Um, if you could do the math here, since this is two-thirds, this is one-third, how you can relate this piece to this piece is that this little piece is half the distance of this other piece. So it takes two of these to equal one of those. So two times C to B, so that's another, I guess, relationship, two times C to B would equal one A to C. So two times this distance here would equal this whole distance. So we're going to go through a couple examples on that one, but that's the main thing about a centroid. So let's go, we'll come back to that sheet here in a minute. So this is what we call the centroid theorem. And so this is what this is basically saying. So what I want us to narrow in on is we're going to look at just the, the segment B to F. And so that's one median of a triangle. So in this drawing, what I want you to notice is that I'm not telling you, I mean, obviously it says centroid theorem here, but what I need you to be able to identify is that it is a centroid without me saying, hey, this is a centroid. P is the centroid of the triangle. How you can tell it's the centroid is because each of the vertex has a line segment from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So I need you to start recognizing the difference between like what a circumcenter would be, what an incenter would be, and what a centroid would be. So remember the incenter connects, um, is like equal distance from the edges of the triangle, and then the circumcenter of it is equal distance from the vertices of the triangle. So there's, there's different information that you're gonna get for each diagram. And so you need to understand what information you are provided so that you can then make, um, so that you can understand which one of these, you know, new terms that you're dealing with, whether we're talking about a circumcenter, an incenter, a centroid, or an orthocenter. All right, so this one's a, cent um, a centroid because we noticed that it's a medians of a triangle. So if we look at the segment B to F, and let's say the distance from B to F is 27. And so what I know by that then is that the distance B to P, so that's the longer of the two segments. So see how B to P and then P to F. B to P is two thirds of 27, and P to F is one third of 27. So if this whole distance is 27, B to P would represent um, 18. And therefore, one third of 27 would represent nine. So now do you see the relationship between B to P and P to F, right? 
this is twice as big as that. Or you can think of it the other way and say this is half of that. So again, we're looking at this relationship being that two-thirds, one-third thing. So this is, if this whole thing represents 27, this longer piece is two-thirds of that, this shorter piece is one-third of the whole thing, or you can think about those two pieces being um, one is double of the other. So that's what that centroid theorem is talking about here. Um, all right, so before we move on to like the, the ortho center and so forth, let's, um, let's do a construction with a centroid, okay? So what I'd like you to do is grab a sheet of paper. I'm gonna go grab one myself. Grab a sheet of paper and we're gonna draw a triangle. So I'm gonna show you how to construct a centroid. So we'll just call this a construction and I know this is on I have um, I have these kind of labeled on uh, on canvas and so forth but this was just kind of a how-to all right so the centroid of a triangle so what you're gonna want to do is start by drawing a triangle and it doesn't really matter what kind of triangle you draw so we all don't have to draw the same kind um, of course would be helpful if you use straight edges though all right, so there's my triangle. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna construct a centroid. So to construct a centroid, what we need to do, remember, we're gonna construct medians of a triangle. So in order to construct the median of the triangle, what we need to do is we need to figure out the midpoint of each of these line segments. So let's label them just for simplicity purposes. Let's find the mid segment or the midpoint of line segment AC. So we're not simply just taking a ruler and measuring it. We're constructing it with our, with our tools. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the, the, basically the construction for a perpendicular bisector, which if you remember is you put your compass at one end. So I'm gonna put my compass at A. I'm gonna pick a distance on my compass that's more than half. Um, so I'm gonna pick, I don't know, something. I'm gonna pick I1 for whatever reason. And then I'm gonna draw an arc. Okay, so I'm going to remember that that was I1 on mine. So I'm going to go to the other side. So I'm going to put my compass at C. I'm going to go to I1 again, so that same distance. And I'm going to draw that arc again. So what we did here is we constructed a perpendicular bisector. So if I connected this X with this X, it's a perpendicular bisector. Now, what I care about is I don't care about the perpendicular bisector. I care about the midpoint. So what I did is I just lined up my X's. So I'll do that one more time. Lined up my X's and I put a dot at the midpoint. So that is all essentially what you're trying to measure is the midpoint of that segment. Once you have the midpoint, now you can connect and find the median. So the median would be from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So there's one median. And so basically what you're going to do now is you're going to do the exact same construction on the other two sides. So I'm going to turn my paper just because it's easier for me. And I'm going to do the exact same construction on B to C. So put your compass, I'm going to put my compass at C. I'm going to pick a distance of, I don't know, we'll go with A1 this time. And then I'm going to go over to B, go to A1, where did I have it? Okay. Okay, um, I'm gonna line up my two X's. So I have this X and this X. And so my midpoint is right there. So now I'm gonna connect the midpoint to the opposite vertex. So in this case, mine is A to this midpoint. And there's my other median. So a lot of times you can stop a lot if you'd constructed two. Uh, I'm gonna go through the process of constructing three. Um, just to kind of show you. Okay, so do the same thing on line segment A to B. So put your compass at A, pick a line segment that's more than half. So I'm going to pick W on this one. Swing my compass over to B. I'm going to pick W. Okay. Okay. So now I can see there's a lot of markings here, so be careful. So I have to find the correct X's. I changed colors of my pen just so that I could uh, keep it straight. So I'm gonna line up this X with that X right here. 
and a dot right here at my midpoint. Now that I have my midpoint, I'm going to connect the midpoint to my vertex, which is the opposite one, which in this case is C. So you can see that mine's not 100%. Um, we are human, right? So we have a little bit of error. Um, but we're just going to kind of make that dot a little bit bigger, and that would be your centroid of your triangle. And so that's the construction for a centroid of your triangle. Okay, um, what we're going to do next is we are going to kind of come back to this page here. So I'm going to move this. And we're going to do some more work with Centroid in a bit, but we're going to add to this page before we kind of get too much further along. So remember this was the altitude. We're going to talk about altitude of a triangle. So just draw any triangle. I'm going to try to draw one that's a little different. And what you're doing here, an altitude is um, from a vertex, and you would go perpendicular straight down. So I tried to make it so that it, it what didn't actually go through the midpoint. Sometimes it does, and this time I just want to make sure that it didn't. Um, all right, so an orthocenter is where three altitudes intersect. And what I'd like you to write in this next box where it says um, kind of like what we're going to learn about this, the lines containing the altitudes of a triangle are concurrent at the orthocenter. So basically what that just means is that they all intersect at the orthocenter. So nothing too earth shattering here, but we'll write it down for the fun of it. So the line containing the altitudes of a triangle are concurrent. So if you don't know that word, it basically just means that they all intersect at the same spot, at the orthocenter. And then if we drew a triangle and real quickly drew in like perpendicular lines from the vertex perpendicular down, this point right here in the middle would be considered our orthocenter. And so that's what a, um, an orthocenter is going to look like. So what this sheet is meant to do is just kind of give you kind of, um, instead of kind of going through all of your notes, right, at any given time, you're, you're hopefully going to go through and kind of study this sheet to make sure you know the difference between all of them, what all the information that you would gather from each individual. Um, the one that's probably the most, I guess, unique is that Detroit one, so I want to pay attention to that. We'll do a little bit more examples. Um, but this is going to kind of be important as you get ready for your end of unit test or any quizzes that are coming up. Okay, um, let's go ahead and turn to page 177 of our student journals. And so what we're going to do here is, again, we talked about the ortho center, and so we're going to skip down and talk about um, some example problems that you would see dealing with centroid and orthocenter. So in exercises one through three, point P is the centroid of triangle LMN and PN and find PN and QP. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do one of these. These are fairly straightforward, but so I'm, what I'm telling you is this is the centroid. So again, if we know that the centroid, we know that relationship holds true, that QN if this QN is 33, then what I know is Q to P is one third of that distance, and N to P is two thirds of that distance. So because this is a centroid, P is the centroid, we know that this represents one third and this represents two thirds of the whole distance of QN. So two thirds of 33 and one third of 33 this is 11, this is 22. You should also double check that these are half of each other because that should hold true. And so that's essentially what you're doing with the centroid. I would consider that a pretty basic problem, but nonetheless, um, you know, worthy, uh, you know, kind of practice that one on your own. And so we'll do a couple of these later. All right, 6.3, um, we're gonna continue on on page 178. So I'm going to do um, a couple more of these. 
And let me move my camera up here. Let's do number four. So it says D to E is seven. So what I'm giving you here is I'm telling you that, it, that D is a centroid, and I'm telling you that D to E is seven. I'm asking you to find C to D, and I'm asking you to find C to E. So you're basically using your information to figure this out. So if you know this is D to E, remember the relationship between D to E and C to D? This would have to be double. So C to D would have to be 14. And then now if you know this is seven and this is 14, add them together, you get 21. So again, pretty straightforward, but again, just kind of giving you a different piece of the puzzle. All right, I'm going to pause the video here. We are gonna do some more. You wanna grab some extra sheets of paper, and then I am going to do the second half of this video um, here in a second, but you're gonna to want to grab some paper, so take a minute to go ahead and grab some of that. I'll meet you back here in just a second.